Hello and welcome to the first review for our deck building roguelike card game tutorial series in Unity. Today we are going to be going over uh, what we've accomplished so far. And I think this is going to be a regular thing that we'll be doing throughout this uh, series. Every once in a while, whenever we finish a specific section of the game, we'll take a moment, we'll review what we've done so far, and we'll also try to refine some of the things that we've done. So, yes, this is going to be a review, but we also have a lot of changes going on. Um, so stick with me till the end, and I'll give you all a bit more of an explanation of how we're going to continue from there. Um, so right now, what I've done, I've, I've added a few extra things to my project. Um, and you're not going to have to worry about writing these out yourself unless you really want to. Because what I've done is I've included my copy of this project as of right now, what I'm going to show you all today, in a link in the description of the video. I highly recommend that you use that going forward to our next section. So you can make sure that there's going to be no issues with what you want to do. And no issues falling along with the project. Um, and that way we kind of have like um, a solid point to start from, solid ground to start from moving on to the game mechanics. So I've changed quite a few things. You can see I actually have a couple more scripts in here than what you might have. I've added two new scripts, a position object and a UI position object script. Um, this is because whenever we have, um, let me jump over to the unchanged one. Whenever we look at our hand position that we have here, you know, we hit play and you know, it looks okay right here, but then we change, start changing different resolutions. You can see it's, it moves the hand position and it's not exactly where you want it to. We go to free aspect and we start doing this. You can see the issues that we're going to run into further along the line. So we want to be future proof with the way we're doing these things. So instead, if we look at our other project where I have made our changes, I hit play here. You can see our uh, hand uh, position object has this UI object position, positioner script on it. It has some settings in here for width and height di division and where it's going to be at on the screen. So right now it's dividing the screen width by two and it's putting it in the center of the screen on the width and then at the bottom of the screen on the height. So now if we change aspect ratios, it's going to stay exactly the same no matter what. You see how big of a change that is? And so I will pull up this script real quick and go over it. So like I said, we have our width divider, our height, our height divider, our width multiplier and height multiplier. Um, and then we have a start, which is going to go ahead and set the position of the object. And then we also have a little bool here, which is, if flagged, will update the position of the object every frame. We don't need this for our hand position, because we just need it to be set at the beginning. But it is a useful toggle if you need to like make adjustments while the game is running. You can toggle this, and then you can see those adjustments play out on the screen. And then down here we have our actual method. We're going to uh, make sure that our object to position, which is our rec transform that, and the object that we're assigning here, we're making sure that's not null and making sure that our width and height are not zero because you can't divide by zero, right? So the very first thing is we take our ratio, which is our width multiplier divided by our width divider, which is going to be 0.5 for this one. Height multiplier divided by our height divider, which is going to be zero for this one. And then we set our max position to our X and Y, our min position to our X and Y, and then our pivot to 0.5.5. And then we're going to set position to zero. So this is just going to center that object using the rec transform 
on the position of the screen that we tell it to. That's all the script is doing. Pretty straightforward. Um, let's go ahead and keep moving on. The next script that I made several changes to is our card movement script. Um, let me go ahead and this is the unchanged version here. And you can see that, you know, we do have our little, um, you know, slow lurping. But if we go into this card prefab and set our lerp to like pretty slow, you know, you can see that just stops moving at a certain point. And if you have your mouse above that position, it doesn't pop over right, you know? So that's one issue that we're having. It also is a little bit weird on different aspect ratios as well. So those are the things we're going to try to address in our fixed script. So on the screen in front of you, you can see two different scripts that I have pulled up. On the right, we have our unchanged script. And then on the left, we have our new script. So the first thing that we did is we went ahead and removed these uh, variables that we are no longer using. If I scroll down here, you know, there's a lot changed to our methods that we will get to. But we're not using these two variables anymore. And then I added a lot more variables in here. And these are actually kind of falling along the same kind of uh, methods and usage as our UI position object script. It's going to do the exact same thing, making sure that our card uh, play position and our um, check to where our mouse is at for our play position is all set to the same no matter the resolution. Okay, and so that's all that these are doing right here. We've got quite a few of them that are doing that. So let's scroll down. So we needed to get a rec transform of our canvas. Um, and so what we had to do is we needed to first make sure that our canvas is not null. And if it's not null, then we set it to our canvas rec transform. And then we also have uh, two new methods here, which are update card play position and update play position which I will go ahead and scroll down to here. And you can see they're doing basically the same thing that the other script is doing. It's multi uh, dividing that multiplier by our divider and it's getting the height of our rec transform of the canvas, multiplying it by that segment. And that's going to be the Y of our card play, which is where we're checking where our mouse is at when we're playing here. Let me show. So you know how whenever we're dragging our mouse up and it pops over here? Well, that position right now is being set by that method. So see this card play. So as soon as my mouse passes a certain point, going to pop over to the side okay all right now let's go ahead and jump back into our scripts and then we also have our play position being set which is where that card pops to when we go above that spot um let's move on to our state changes we didn't have any changes in the states really um didn't have any changes here no changes here really the biggest change is in our on pointer down um we removed this whole line because we don't need it anymore um Make sure you remove both of these lines because we don't need them anymore. Okay. And then in our on drag, we made a few changes to where instead of our lurping happening here, 
it's actually handling it in our handle drag state down here. And so those are really the big changes on this script. So now that we've gone through all the changes that we made, let's just do a quick recap of our script. We get our rec transform, we get our canvas, our parent canvas, we get our parent canvas rec transform. Uh, we get a scale for our vector three, which is setting our original scale. Um, we get our current state, our original rotation, our original position. Uh, we already went through all these fields. We have our rake method, our update method, which is checking if we need to update our positioning based off some bools. And then we have some state, a state machine here where it's switching between states and calling those methods depending upon the state. We have our zero state, which is just resetting the position of the card. We have our on pointer enter state, on pointer exit, which transitions back to zero. Our on pointer down state, our on drag state, our handle hover state, our handle drag state, our handle play state, and then our update position states. All this is making sure that whenever you use our card, we can drag it around and do what we need to with it. Okay. The next script we're going to look at is our arc renderer script. So if we go and hit play here, we take a look at our arc. You can see, you know, it's being a little wonky right now, but you can see how it's behaving. You know, and if we go to like our 4K resolution, you know, it's even worse. How it kind of like gets really, really wonky. So we need to make sure that's the same on every resolution that's behaving correctly. So now I'm back over on the uh, fixed script. You can see here how much smoother the arrow is. And if we go out to, you know, our 4K resolution, it's looking exactly the same as it did before, right? We're not having any issues with that. So looking out our arc renderer script, uh, we need to, to make sure that we had the same ratio of dot spacing depending upon resolution. So in order to do that, we first had to get two new um, variables in here. The first is going to be our base screen width, which is whatever your base resolution is on your root canvas. So if we go back to our scene and you look at our canvas here, our reference resolution is 1920. It's going to be the exact same in this script. And then we have a private float, which is our spacing scale. So the very first thing that we do is at our start, we're going to get the width of our screen which is what this is doing right here. And it's going to divide it by our base screen width. And this is going to get us a float, which is basically going to be how we're going to multiply our spacing for our dots. Okay. And we're also going to be doing it on enable just in case if the uh, screen resolution changes. All right. So then if we go back down to our update arc, and then we have our um, number of dots. So this is where we're getting our spacing skill at. So number of dots, di and then our distancing is multiplied by our spacing scale. Okay. And then that's how we're making sure that our spacing is all set out correctly throughout the entire arrow. It's basically all we needed to do. So we changed two other scripts in our um, project that I'm sharing with you. Um, so we changed our deck manager and our hand manager scripts. So what we did before is we set our max hand size inside of our hand manager. And when adding a new card, we made sure that our card and hand size or our card count does not exceed our hand size count. 
And that meant that we were adding cards without checking. And so we'd loop through our list of cards without um, resetting or not, without stopping in case we couldn't draw that card. Let me show you what I mean in game. So if I go to my deck manager and I tell, us, tell it to draw cards until we have 12. Okay. Well, if I hit draw next card, it's still looping through our list of cards. Even though we can't draw it. You can see now it's not drawing any cards. So back over in our fixed game, you can see we can draw up to 12 cards. We delete this and then set our current hand size back to 11. Got to fix this because I haven't like fixed it to where if I just delete an object, it's gone, you know. So I got to go in here and then redo this. And then if I draw a new card, it is the correct next card. You know, it's not just some random spot in the list. Okay, so that's what we needed to fix. So in order to fix that, we're getting our hand manager. And then we are getting the um, max hand size from our hand manager. And then we are updating our current hand size to equal our cards and hand count. And then we're checking to make sure if our current hand size is less than our max hand size before we draw a card. Simple enough, easy to understand. So just a reminder that this is our deck manager script, which is managing all the cards in our deck. And this is our hand manager script, which is handling the position and the cards that are currently in our hand. So that's going to be it for our review for today. Um, I would recommend that you download this project and keep this as your tutorial project. And then just transfer over any useful scripts or lessons over to your personal project as you see fit. Just so that we're all on the same page. It makes it easier for me to troubleshoot issues if you have them. And it'll just make things easier moving forward. So our next tutorial is going to start working and creating our game manager script, which is going to be kind of like the uh, brain behind the entire game system. And so it's going to ma manage our deck in our hand and eventually our discard or used pile. Um, it's also going to be managing our grid that we'll be playing our little characters onto. Um, and so that's what we're going to start with next is our game manager script. And then after that, I think we'll probably be going to work on the grid and actually playing the cards. All right. I'll see you next time.